but uh, I'm sure you'll get a couple of tenths off for the uh, acrobatic arm movements there. Boy, beautiful position in the air. He's a little over. <laughs> you can't blame him for trying. Beijing's official marks, 9.737, puts him in second place behind Miss Uten. Welcome back. Our next athlete on the rings is American Paul O'Neill, a 26-year-old from Denver, father of three. He's won this event three times at NC2A championship competition, but this is his first opportunity at a major international event. He's got power to spare, but it wasn't always that way. I was a real skinny kid, and I had two older brothers who were real muscular. So they would always, and my dad was a welder, so he, and they got into gymnastics like in high school. So he put up a, welded up a ring ring course in the backyard. And since I was the, the weakling of the bunch, uh, they would always kick me in the butt and make me get up there. And uh, I, I don't know how much it's genetic. I worked really hard for it. it ha there has to be some genetics involved, but I don't think you get real strong without having it. So I don't know. It was a, it was a lot of both, a lot of work though. <laughs> This is a very big moment for U.S. gymnastics because Paul, in the preliminary rounds, was third place both sessions. And he really legitimately has a chance to win the first medal in, well, I guess it's 13 years for the Americans in the World Championship competition. He has plenty of strength moves in this routine and a spectacular double back within the rings in the laid out position. He's the only one who does it. By being a rings specialist, Judges haven't seen much of him internationally. This format will allow him to shine. Here comes the move. Double back laid out and he hangs on to the rings and goes all the way around to an L cross. Talk about power to spare. Press to a handstand. The rings are swinging just a little bit. Very clean. Front giant. It's down to the landing. Okay. <laughs> and he punctuates that routine with a fist in the air. What's great about this routine is not only is there a tremendous amount of strength, but this move here called a kutsogi, invented by a Hungarian gymnast, but he never did it like that. Paul does it laid out and finishes in an L cross. The dismount is the same that most of the gymnasts are using. Laid out, double flip with a full twist. Great job on the landing. I'm anxious to see this score. And his performance doubly impressive since he won, underwent reconstructive surgery after tearing the bicep tendon attachment at the elbow in November of 1990. Was unable to train for about eight months. They've certainly shown those judges something strong at these world championships. 9.762 moves him into second place right now. An opportunity for the first American medal in world championship competition in 13 years. Vitaly Sherbo, who did so well on the pommel horses, back again at the rings. Sherbo was the first gymnast in the world to cross the rings and change direction. He'll do that early in his routine. It's a really unusual combination. Since he did it a couple of years ago, there are several gymnasts in the world that are attempting to do this. It's very smooth. Notice how he doesn't rush. He presses and squeezes every position. Beautiful planche. Okay, here's the twist. Back through the rings, and then he finishes in handstand. Incredible that he squares his body line up and finishes right in a clean handstand. Dismount. Wow. The performance is getting better with each athlete. It's so difficult to get originality points on rings because it's a standard formula to every routine, but 
when he came up with this new idea to completely change directions, you need never see anyone turn around in the rings, cross the straps, he goes back through them while they're still crossed, and then unwinds and finishes in a handstand. What's amazing to me is that he's completely square in the handstand at the finish of that. You'd think he'd be twisting all over the place. Once again, no one does landings better than the Soviets or the Commonwealth athletes now. Oh. The official marks for Sherbo, 9.90, and that catapults him into the lead. We'll be back with more from the rings in just a moment. Come back to Paris. Our next athlete taking his position on the rings is Sylvester Chilanya from Hungary, out of Budapest, a 22-year-old. Chilanya has an unusual combination in his routine. It was invented by a Chinese gymnast named Li Jing. What a mount. From an L cross, he pressed to an inverted iron cross. Here's this move. It's called a Li Ning. And he finishes in a Maltese cross, bounce to another iron cross. This is the best ring finals I've ever seen. The most strength, the most unusual combinations, and the best dismounts, all in one competition. See if he can stick the landing. <laughs> what a final. Smile on his face for good reason. This is probably one of those events that really benefits from the specialist influence. There's no question. And this routine, as you can see, had plenty of strength and difficulty. This is the originality section. Invented by Li Ning from China, and then he finishes just freezing it in a Maltese cross. Look at the straight body. The dismount is the same as many of the gymnasts have used, and an excellent landing. Unfortunately, I think for Paul O'Neill, that probably will bounce him out of the bronze medal right th at this point. Now, our leader is Sherbo at 9.90 but anything better than a 9.762 will knock Paul O'Neill out of the medals. Oh my God, his fate is right here. Nope. Paul's bounce of fourth. And Bart, the scores indicate you're right. Sylvester Solanyi moves to second place, dropping Paul O'Neill from the United States down to fourth. A silver medal from the man that wasn't expected to perform that great a routine. He goes by almost the entire field. Vitaly Sherbo is the only one who remains unbeaten here with the gold in the rings. The results in the rings. Sherbo wins the gold. The American Paul O'Neill finished fourth. Well, that brings to a close the first day of competition here at the 1992 World Championships. And, Kathy, you'd have to say that the Americans certainly have a reason to be proud of the performances they saw. John, Kim Zemesco really proved herself here. Both she and Henrietta Onodi certainly provided the highlights of the competition. Not only did they capture all the medals, but they captured the heart and the imagination of this audience, which is so much a part of gymnastics. Makes it really exciting looking ahead to Barcelona. It certainly does. And Bart, you'd have to ask you now, is this new format, the individual events only format, in the benefit of the spectator? Well, it really does make for an exciting competition. Although I was a little disappointed for the American men, they came within a tenth of a point of actually winning a medal here for the first time in 13 years but you're right the spectator wins because we've seen the highest level of difficulty in any world championship competition and that's great for us and of course that excitement will continue when we bring you the second half of these world championships that's saturday on abc's wide world of sports so be sure to watch us next week for now and my partners kathy and bart i'm john neighbor saying so long from gay paris
40 years, the athletes of the Soviet Union dominated the sport of gymnastics. 180 gold medals in world and Olympic competition. They towered above them all. And while the rest of the world played catch up, the Soviets pushed onward and upward. They didn't choose their sport, it chose them. Handpicked as children, the most promising left their families and childhoods behind to serve their country. The youthful athlete, a powerful metaphor for the strength within the Soviet Union. Now they awaken to a hungry new nation in search of reform and changes that could topple their dynasty. And the world appears ready, knocking at the door an explosive U.S. team led by fireball Kim Zamasko, who last year at the World Gymnastics Championships did what no American had ever done before. She won the gold medal in the all-around competition. Then last Saturday in Paris, Kim Zamasko made history again when she became the first American woman in 14 years to win a gold medal in the event finals at this year's World Championships. She has sent a powerful message to the world in this Olympic year. 40 years of Soviet dominance brought to an end by the girl next door. Is the end of an era at hand? Today, she and gymnasts from nearly 50 nations compete in Paris. Stay tuned for our continuing coverage of the 1992 World Gymnastics Championships. April in Paris. Chestnuts in blossom. Holiday tables under the trees. April in Paris. This is a feeling no one can ever reprise. Welcome to one of the great cities of Europe. Today we're in Paris, France for our continuing coverage of the 1992 World Gymnastics Championships. Once again, we're indoors on the banks of the Seine at the Pelé Omnisport for the second day of individual event finals. The team in all-around competitions will occur in next year's annual championships. Hi, everybody. I'm John Neighbor. And in case you missed us last Sunday, well, we saw five fantastic competitions in individual event apparatus. Let's take a look at the results. The Commonwealth of Independent States, formerly the Soviet Union, won or shared top honors in each of the three men's events. In the women's action, Henrietta Onodi won two medals for Hungary, while Kim Zameskel won America's first gold medal for women in individual event apparatus finals since 1978. And in case you missed that performance, here once again is Kim Zameskel's gold medal winning action in the women's floor exercise. So Kim Zameskel adds an individual event goal to the all-around title she earned at the World Championships last September and in the process silenced some of her critics. 
a lot of people were criticizing me after World Championships last September that I could only win because it was in the United States and I didn't have enough difficulty to win a bronze on floor and I sort of did both here. So. And so Kathy Johnson, it would appear that with a victory here in the floor exercise, Kim Zameskel has solidified her position in the eyes of the judges. John, the most important thing this proves is that Kim Zameskel can win outside of the United States, which is extremely important as she heads for the Barcelona Olympics. She's in the balance beam finals today and this will be her toughest battle. She's